DojaToja.com. Lately, I've been acting childish. Trying to figure out why you ain't in my missed calls. I ain't trying to fight, baby, you got it. Blame me for things when I ain't even involved. Toxic traits. I've been sleeping on you, I'm wide awake. And I felt your vibe when you were smiles away. Overcrowded me when I want space. Said I was good, but I'm not okay. Sex. I ain't your bro, that's irrelevant. In a room, looking at old text messages. When I lose, I can't just go, that's settling. In a mood, you hit my soul like some medicine. Like, I, I can, like I said, I can admit, I can be toxic, I can be petty. I'm in no way perfect. I, I take accountability. I will say that there's not a lick of accountability. There, there's not a lick of like, yeah, you know what? I did do this, and I, and I probably shouldn't have. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Dame Doja. If you're looking to get your interview done or be a guest host on our podcast, hit us up at dojatoja at gmail.com. Bump what you heard. Remember who told you. It's Doja Toja. Yeah, man, never, 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 never fall in love again, man. Never. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to call it falling in love. We're going to fall uh, on love. <laughs> never fall in love again, man. She she capping, too, because, you know what I'm saying, they have such a, 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 a great relationship. I uh, seen something nice that old DDG did for Hallie the other day. It warmed my heart, you know, seeing their online relationship and just, you know what I'm saying, they got the new baby and all that. Yeah, man. I don't know if y'all seen that. Let me let, let me put y'all on, man, to the Haley Awards, man. Make y'all feel, make y'all feel all certain. Jittery inside too. Yeah, that was new music from Haley uh, that we kind of got to get into real quick because we were stalling for time, but now we had to go ahead and bring the show back. It's the Doja Toja podcast. Um, what number it is? One hundred five. One hundred five. Part two this time. Bringing it back around. That was called In Your Hands. We played some music from Chameleon. Of course, Roll Your Dice. Roll the Dice, excuse me. Um, what, Don Tolliver? Deep in the Water. Bryson Tiller. Got some new music that we uh, had to get into. And um, who else? Tobias Tate made it. Bryce until the uh, party next door, real woman. Yeah, man. So we that was a vibe. That was like the little little R and B little vibe we had to get y'all real quick. And Sire the Kid, man. Sire the Kid, happily never after, man. Y'all go stream that great um body of work. I stamped that. Great body of work. Um he usually does have very, very toxic music, but he liked the R and B future, you know what I'm saying? R and B future a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he rap too, sometimes. So, yeah, man, y'all go check out that brand new music, brand new R&B, man. Shout out to Haley once again. But, yeah, y'all check out this video. Yeah, right man, here. y'all go check out that brand new oh, music. Oh, no, no. Brand dude. new R&B. Cut that. Yeah, but y'all check out this video real quick, man. Um, That uh, old boy did, DDG, basically gave Haley a bunch of awards because she didn't win any. NAACP Image Awards. So he uh trying to show that he could be boyfriend of the year and outdoing all you punks. That boy putting in that work. And he gave her what what he would call the Haley Awards. So yeah. Y'all check this out. And this award goes to the one and only Haley Bailey for the best mother award. Woo! 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 Yeah! Thank you. <laughs> 
Yeah, so he gave her a bunch of awards because she didn't win the award at the award ceremony. No, you know, he making us all look bad. If you a boyfriend out there, man, you know, DDG out here to make you look bad. His brand new relationship, he gave a whole handful of awards and did it online while, while she was holding Welcome the Welcome to the Halley Awards. Woo! Make us all look bad as a boyfriend. Go ahead, buddy. Halle Bailey. Halle Bailey. Halle Bailey. Halle Bailey. Nominated. Again. Again. What the hell? (laughs) Final award. Presented by the one and only Halo. And this award goes to the one and only Halle Bailey for the best mother award. Woo! Y'all, some of y'all cry, whatever. That did make that, that make some of y'all cry out there. You know, some of you saps. Yeah, man. The war, the, the war goes to the one and only Haley Bailey for the best mother award. Woo. Yeah, brand new mother. That was a good move, though, man. Good, good, good move, buddy. You know. DDG. A lot of folks be hating on DDG and they ain't like the relationship that they had because he had got him a good wholesome one. But they got them a nice little uh, relationship, you know? And you know what I'm saying? He made her cry. He he, he uh, got some props from his wife and the internet. You know what I'm saying? You know, got the, got the respect that, man. Congratulations, man. Yeah, man. Bought a bunch of awards. All you had to do was order some trophies. Oh. Huh. Shout out to the uh platinum record they got in the background, Chloe and Haley. Holly. Excuse me. I always say Haley and that's that's wrong. Need to get her name correctly. But yeah, shout out to her new single as as well. It's called In Your Hands. That was the one we were just playing that sounded all dramatic and stuff. Yeah. Breaking all this new music, man. You know what it is. It's those told you podcasts, man. And um, this is part two. So we got a whole lot of that was the wholesome. But, you know, we got a whole lot of bullshit on the way with politics and allegations. So let me get my music together. Let me get my theme music together. What, what are we going to hit them with this time? Get our theme music together, man. Because get these politics. Is there any, any politics that we could talk about? Let me see. Nick Saban? No, nah, no, nah, we're, we're waiting on Nick Saban. Donald Trump? Well, before we talk about Donald Trump, we have to talk about the RICO case anyway. We can discuss Nathan Wade having to step down. It seems that Judge Scott McAfee has decided in the ruling. Um, if you know, we've been following the um, Trump Rico case that is led by the DA, Fonnie Willis. And y'all know she had the big hearing um, because they were trying to uh, question the integrity of the prosecution and saying that there was a special treatment being done and 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 money being made under the table because Fonnie Lewis was in a relationship with Nathan Wade who she also put in charge of the case whether or not they said that it happened before uh, she wasn't in a relationship at the beginning and then she probably fell for him cuz he started coming through with them boom 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 facts and them you know what I'm saying you know coming through with that evidence you know what I'm saying and he was such a charming guy when he came through with the evidence that Fonnie Lewis just you know couldn't resist his charm and I don't even know why I keep doing this why I you know say stuff but I just felt like that 
because it's a little, you know, extra juice on top of it. Pause. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, man, Nathan Wade was asked to step down and resign from the case. Was that fair? Was he making too much money? And then they hating on the black man once again. I'm saying, you know, black man always got to take the the uh, the brunt of the punishment. But Founding Willis still can be able, she still will be able to, you know, continue uh, throughout the trial. And really, they really didn't do anything. Most of this was just really a sideshow anyway, to tell y'all the truth. It was really just a sideshow. Um... But they so far won because they had to get one of the lawyers to actually step down from the case. And um, it was either that or she had to, she would be removed. So black man got sacrificed, man. They had to sacrifice official lamb and Nathan Wade. And um, what folks got to say about that? You know what I'm saying? You know, are we going to get any credit for that? Stepping in once again for the black woman. Good old black man. Yeah, y'all thought I was going to come with a whole bunch of, you know what I'm saying, politics and allegations the wrong way. But nah, behind every good black woman, great black woman, excuse me, it's a black man paying cash. He said he paid her back. No, no, she said every time he spent any money on her, he paid her back in cash. Finding Willis don't play. But he also had to pay with cash. Yeah, man. Nathan Wade, sacrificial lamb, had to step down. But will that change anything for good old um for good old Agent 45? So oh, good old Agent Forty Five. Let's see. Uh, let's let's look at the res- resignation letter. The Honorable Fanny Willis uh, via hand delivery. Dear District Attorney Willis, the furtherance of rule of law and democracy is and has always been the north star of our combined efforts in the prosecution of those who are alleged to have attempt to overthrow the results of the Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Our team is dedicated to ensuring that. A Fulton County jury in a Fulton County courtroom renders a true and just verdict in this case. As directed by the order today by the state of Georgia versus Donald John Trump, uh, I hereby offer my resignation effectively immediately. A special prosecutor for the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, although the court found that the defendants failed to meet their burden of proving that the district attorney uh, uh, acquired, I'm about to say uh, awkward. I'm over here acting like I don't know how to read. Reading is fundamental, Doge. Let's get it together. Uh, what we had acquired an uh, actual conflict of interest. I'm offering my resignation in an interest of democracy and dedication to the American public and to move this case forward as quickly as possible. I'm proud of our work, of the work our team has accomplished in investigating, indicting, and litigating this case, seeking justice for the people of Georgia and the United States, and being part of the effort to ensure that the rule of law and democracy are preserved has been the honor of a lifetime. I am sure that the case and the team will be in good hands moving forward and justice will be served. You, the team on this case, and the entire office have my prayers for your safety and your success in the pursuit of justice. Respectfully, Nathan J. Wade, Esquire. Yeah, man. I don't know whether, I ain't gonna get a DA or anybody working for the DA round of applause. I ain't gonna take it that far. But, you know what I'm saying? Salute the brother taking the fall for, you know, a mistake that a black woman probably made even though she put him in position to make some money when it all said and done he stood up and stood on business so uh we'll give him a um 
we'll kind of show it out. We can't get no a round of applause. We're going to give them a, one of these. Lions and a traitor. <laughs> you are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Damn sure. <laughs> get them old Darth Vader, man. <laughs> a part of the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> Goddamn traitor. All right, man. Let's uh keep this thing moving, man. I want to uh, show y'all a little bit of illumination that I found that was kind of uh, interesting. Really, this whole uh, part two, I ain't gonna front. Everything in part two is really just. Uh, I guess I got a couple of wholesome topics. Cause really everything was just gonna be a bunch of uh, clips, a bunch of bunch of people talking bad about Trump, just a bunch of clips. And not that I'm trying to make a bunch of clips. Uh, why they want to take TikTok because of the Palestinian Palestinian war? I'm not even it's a war actually. The uh, Palestinian uh, genocide. Um, it's safe to call it that. Um. I usually don't even speak on none, none of that stuff. Uh, but then I guess I'm not really going to speak on it. It's Ramadan, whatever time. I, I'm going to be respectful. But at the same time, we just got a couple of videos that we're going to play, whether or not uh, they, they're about either one of those subjects. Um, stay tuned and find out. Here we go. Down the rabbit hole we go. It's a couple of things that we have in common on these particular uh, images that we're showing in front of you guys. And uh, maybe you guys will kind of like see the resemblance of a lot of the things that uh, boom right there in the background. Y'all seen that? Let me kill that music too because they might try to uh, try to get me at the music. But yeah, it'd be a lot going on, man. A lot of images that be going on when it involves programming and watching uh, watching out. Of course, we got to talk about the Nickelodeon situation. I really still haven't seen the doc. But yeah, man, it just, I seen um, this particular clip I, mean, I couldn't help but to notice, you know, all of the everything that you know, all of these different cartoons had in common. You know, all the all the different imagery that was always suddenly showed, like on the low, like boom. You might not catch you might not catch it if you don't pay attention. Boom. It's like you don't catch it when you don't when you don't pay attention, but if you stop it right there, they there. And so maybe I've been programmed pretty good, pretty decent. I always liked the comic books. I always liked the cartoons, cartoon movies. And this, this particular part of the show is really, really more relative for the visual part of the show. So make sure if you are only listening, you might want to go on the YouTube channel or the Twitch channel and actually watch this part of the show or uh, check out this particular clip. But again, this is just a, a collection of images from a variety of animations that particularly share a common resemblance. Alright, so yeah, yeah, y'all like, man, you can y'all ain't gonna show Um uh, If you uh care to notice, it's a lot of Illumination going on. The all seeing eye. The all seeing eye is uh 
in the pyramid or it is right there it's just usually You know, it's just, yeah, it's just, uh, that's the way the angels are described in the Bible most of the time. Their bodies are covered with eyes. So it's just another copycat of the devil. Yeah. He wants to see everything the way that God sees everything. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a clip that I came across, man, that I just, you know, wanted to just share. I didn't really want to go too deep into, you know, actual, I just found it. A particular coincidence that it was in, um, you know, the background that you know is shared like that, and they kind of, um, kind of will just follow in, follow up with um, more conversation when it comes to the Nickelodeon doc, and they got everybody in the uproar. Uh, not really even an uproar, you know. That's just what people been talking about this week. Um, but yeah, I was just leading up to the Nickelodeon doc in particular. And, um, in case you guys haven't watched it, I haven't watched it. It's called quiet on the set. It's, um, about former Nickelodeon, uh, producer Dan Schneider, Schneider and, um, Drake Bell and a couple of other kids that were, uh, involved kid stars that were involved in Nickelodeon shows. Um, it just kind of just shows a, a pattern of Nickelodeon being um, a little uh, kind of a gateway towards uh, pedophilia. And um, for a couple of the people that they allowed to work on their sets, and they actually known these people who were actually sex offenders at that, and um, and then even just some of the some of the imagery that they uh, also included in um, their shows, uh, you know, from you know some of the more pranks that they actually used to have, some of the people do, whether or not they was like getting a lot of it. Just you think about was just being slimed and stuff like that, but. Some of the stuff that was rather perverted. I haven't seen it, so I can't really speak on. I haven't seen the doc, but when I think about it and I heard people talking about it, it made me just think about, you know, the possibilities of um, it being a breeding ground uh, for predators upon children. Um, but got a lot of folks talking. Uh, Drake Bell, um, it was one of the actual kids that they was uh, uh that was in the doc, uh, former child star. Uh, say uh, for the first time, Drake Bell is opening up about being sexually assaulted by Nickelodeon dialogue and acting coach Brian Peck. Um, quiet on the set, the dark side of kids TV, the upcoming I uh, documentary uh, that just recently aired. Uh, dives into both the alleged emotional abuse by Nick creator Dan Schneider and the physical abuse by Brian Peck. In uh, 2003, Peck, 43 at the time, was arrested on 11 charges, including sodomy, lewd act upon a child 14 or 15 by a person 10 years older, and oral compilation uh, by anesthesia or controlled substance. By, uh, but the minor was not named until now. My name is Drake Bell. I came here today to tell my story, Bell says during the documentary's third episode before de detailing his close relationship with Peck, whom he met at the beginning of season two of The Amanda Show. Yeah, man. So it was kind of like weird because, you know, it, it, it just fit the description. Um, uh, Just to give y'all a brief synopsis of what I heard about the show, uh, about the uh, documentary. And Drake... Uh, and Drake Bell's situation, his dad was like really involved at first. And then it was a, a time where his uh, the the guy who was put in charge of um, Drake Bell of the uh, of 
you know, the guy in charge of being kind of like the liaison. Um, I think he's like the script handler or something. He, he is. But anyway, he's uh, put in charge of the kid and he starts putting, um, wedging a, a separation between the, the child's father and the child by saying, you know, he's stealing from him. Uh, you know, he's a problem on set and, you know, yada, yada. And after that, uh, you know, they get him out of there. They get the daddy out of there. And so then, you know, they um, he he in the middle of a divorce. So Moms is now taking, you know what I'm saying, Drake to uh, the Nickelodeon uh, set. And Moms can't make it all the time. So then Buddy offered to start driving and bringing, you know what I'm saying, uh, Drake himself or whatever, driving up. Then Buddy started offering Drake to spend a night over it. At his house, you know what I'm saying? You know, and then he, had, he he got one of them houses that got all these kid-friendly stuff or whatever, a lot of games and a lot of, you know, a lot of memorabilia and all this Nickel- great, you know what I'm saying, Nickelodeon uh, stuff at his house. So then, you know, he he, he started having a uh, Drake birthday party over there at the house and all kind of extra stuff or whatever um, to show that Drake is comfortable and he could start staying up, you know. Um, and then, you know, the whole time he 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 started molesting the um the boy, and it don't come out till later. But the um the whole premise of it really is just real real crazy because them folks didn't really even get that much jail time. It's just something that you know it's kind of known but kind of not known. They kind of you know what I'm saying sweep it under the rug and they keep it moving. Um and it it, it, it it's sick. It's sick. Um sick sad. But informative and and people should know about certain things like this that's going on. So I intend to check it out. Um, but yeah, I guess that is that is just the gist of it. Quiet on the set is the name of the documentary. Um, and again, that's just one of the stories that's being said. Um, about Nickelodeon and um, and one of the producers, uh, Dan Schneider, on the Nickelodeon uh, network. Um, yeah, man, it it, 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 it get deep. I, I, I hear why that Dan Schneider uh, might. I heard allegedly that he's a. Uh, uh, Jamie Lee, uh, Jamie Lee Spears, Britney Spears' uh, younger daughter, uh, I'm mean, not daughter, younger sister, uh, he got up pregnant. And uh, supposedly, why she was, you know, kind of still um, under the Nickelodeon um, network, why she was still signed or whatever, you know, but she was a, she was young, um, a minor supposedly, and. They had to kind of take off all, take a, a show off the air or whatever, and kind of like, but but compensate her other ways and things like that. So yeah, it gets kind of weird. It gets kind of nasty. Uh, Quiet on the set is the name of the documentary, man. I'm gonna uh, check it out this week or whatever, and probably let y'all know a little follow up. But uh, yeah, man, these folks is out there, man, and and it is bad because uh, even with Drake Bell, for instance, his dad had a feeling about like what them folks was on. And, you know, um, and, and they still kind of got him out of there. He, he was, he was overprotective. He did all the right things as far as putting him, uh, uh, finding ways to protect his kid, but also giving his kid an opportunity of a lifetime by being on a show like Nickelodeon. Um, but still again, they still can get the best of you. Cause dude was just patient. Dude, you know what I'm saying? Seeked out his uh his prey. And that's what a predator does. He was patient. Um, but yeah, man, um I'm gonna check it out. And I should I I think you guys should check it out too. Nickelodeon. Oh Nichols. Sick old Nico.
say one of the black dude, one is a black couple that say that they, I mean, not a black couple, but a black family that say they, 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 they grateful. Everything Nickelodeon ever did for them. So they ain't, they ain't have no issues. Buddy though, remember Buddy that was uh, the comedian from the, um, what his name was, Lil JJ, comedian? He, he 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 posted this post. Just Jordan got canceled. I ain't giving up no ass. But you know, that could be, you know, that could be metaphorically. He could be talking about metaphoric metaphorical booty. <laughs> he said, uh, just Jordan said, I ain't giving up no ass, man. They canceled my show. It's done so, son. Shout out to uh buddy though, man. Jay Lewis. Her name was Lil' JJ, I think. He uh won one of them um BET comic uh comic special deals. And um put him on the map. Then he got signed to Nickelodeon. And you know, show guy canceled because he say, Hey, I ain't giving up no ass. So, you know, whatever that means. Uh, that girl Lele I just actually it makes sense now that she's uh, not actually um, going forward with her Nickelodeon career ah that makes a lot of sense that girl Lele say hey Nickelodeon is a thing of the past we moving forward shout out to Lele you know what I'm saying that girl Lele yeah she done had her stint the end of a beginning you you know me you know i don't do the mushy stuff but this was so special i literally went from rapping in a car with no acting experience to having a self-titled hit tv show i love every second of the experience growth and life with my tv family i remain thankful for this opportunity that i've been manifesting since i was five and sitting in the house watching nickelodeon all day i don't know what exactly is in store next but because of each person on the rap for set that didn't allow me to quit uh, and made sure I knew that I was a natural born star. I am 100% ready. Rest easy, David, and drop me a script or two in my dreams. Huge thank you to all my fans that have fought for me and my and love me from near and afar. I love you deeply. Uh, TGLL is far from being over. Oh, that girl, Lele, is far from being over. Stay tuned. This is most definitely to be continued. And, you know, she is actually a rapper. She, her rap career has kind of been taken off. She got a new single with T.I. Uh, a couple of new singles that she got out now. But, you know, I say if she continues to rap, you know what I'm saying, she might end up, you know, uh, having to get a little more ratchet. But maybe she might not even, you know what I'm saying, you know, do any, do, need to do anything. Maybe she could just do an acting, be an actor and, you know, continue to mentor kids the right way she ain't got the you know but she definitely got to uh compete with old sexy <laughs> no nah, i'm wrong i'm wrong i know i know shout out to that girl lele man she said she ain't got no issues with nickelodeon and i seen a couple of other you know what I'm saying folks from the community that said you know that wasn't necessarily their experience but um that's neither here nor there uh, y'all go watch the documentary. Let me know what y'all think next week. All right. All right. All right. We keep it moving, man. Um, next thing we can kind of talk about. Because I ain't really talking about nothing. I'm just kind of talking about it. Um, Everybody want a podcast. How come everybody got a podcast coming up, man? What's going on? LeBron and, and, and JJ Reddick. Let's start a podcast. Um... I haven't I haven't seen in, uh, any in, any uh clips of it yet, so let me go see what the what the clips of LeBron and, and, and JJ ready. Actually, they just debuted it. Um, they just debuted it like uh, the coverage is day, a day ago. So the the <laughs> the pick the picker B O B 
Not bombs over Baghdad, but baseline out of bounds. Yeah. Baseline. Oh yeah. shit. Oh, already, already. Goddamn, LeBron. See, you're going over my head already, man. He said B.O.B. I thought you was talking about either at least the rapper B.O.B. But then you said bombs over bad dad. But then it wasn't about that B.O.B. It could have been about Bob Saget. You know what I'm saying? You know, any other Bob. But you said baselines over what? Bombs over Baghdad, but baseline out of bounds. Yeah. America's play. Yeah, America's play. Yeah. You have the guard. You have the best shooter sitting in the middle of the lane. Yep. You have the biggest wing sitting at the top. Five is on the strong side. You have the point guard taking it out. Yeah. And then the weak side corner. And the weak side corner. Yeah. It's not many times that the guy, the wing, that's coming down the middle gets that pass. Because in theory, if you're guarding the ball, 1-1,000, 2-1,000, take away the basket, and then jump out, right, to take away the shot. The guy that's guarding the ball, when he says 1-1,000, 2-1,000, 3-1,000, why doesn't he just take the guard that's coming out for the pick to picker? And the guard that's guarding the, the pick the picker guy just falls right to the to the guy that's taking the ball out. Yeah. You go one one thousand, two one thousand. JJ Redick is flying off left right where you know he's dangerous. He can shoot straight up and down if he wants to, or he's gonna fade if he wants to as well. Maybe kick you. <laughs> it's my natural shooting motion. <laughs> it's my natural shooting motion. I'm guarding the ball. I just take JJ. And the guard who was chasing you just falls right to the to the to the to the, to the guy that's taking the ball out. That's one. That's not. We could talk about that. So other. no, no. So what's interesting about that? I like that. I'll tell you why. I don't. I tell you why. Because I'm already fucking lost. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't on the goddamn. I wasn't on the basketball team in high school. You know what I'm saying? My brother here, you know what I'm saying? He might, you know what I'm saying? His, his chops probably starting to get wet a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He's thinking about all this coaching, the X and the O's, and the goddamn the B.O.B., you know what I'm saying? Bombs in the baseline, or whatever he said, man. Baseline over the boards. Something like that. Hey, man, I'm lost already. And I think J.J. Redick is too, but he finna try to defeat me some more bullshit too. Keep it going. Because like someone who ran that play, right? So... Whether I slipped or set the screen, I'm coming off. A lot of teams after two one thousand would send the guy guarding the, guarding the takeout guy. They'd send him to me. Yeah. The problem is, my guy's still chasing me. So what happens? I get the ball. I don't have a shot because now I got two guys at me. It's a quick pass back to the inbounder. He gets a layup. So don't chase you. That's what I'm saying. It's, take it's you, actually a good. It's actually a good take, cover. Take you to the screen. Yeah. And at the screen. The X5 that's guarding the pick the picker big opens up and you slide right to the guy that's guarding. Hold on, hold on, stop oh, right there. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. God damn, LeBron. I didn't know you were such a goddamn basketball high, nerd. High level IQ basketball talk. Yeah, very, very high level. Extremely high level basketball talk. I'm still on, you know, uh, Shannon and and, and uh, Stephen A. Smith, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of rest in peace, Mortensen, but that's quarterback talk. Whole nother, you know what I'm saying? See, whole, whole, you know, a whole nother. Nah, you got to get on that Gilbert Arena. The boys be talking that real ball. They be talking like this, but not at this high. Gilbert Arenas and um, Rashad, uh, Rashad McCants. McCants. Brandon Jennings, King Martin. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the basketball talk. But this guy, but LeBron said something, man. He said Peter Pector picked a pickle. Hold on, he say. A so don't chase you. That's what I'm saying. It's, take it's you, actually a good. It's actually a good take, cover. Take you to the screen. Yeah. And at the screen, the X five that's guarding the pick the picker big opens up and you slide right to the guy that's yeah. guarding. The pick the picker big. The what? He keeps saying the, it like it's just regular. The pause. Pause. I don't know, Paul. Something. Oh, what? That's what I'm saying. It's, take it's you, actually a good. It's actually a good take, cover. Take you to the screen. Yeah. And at the screen, the X five that's like guarding the pick the picker big. Oh, the pick the picker big. Hey man, who says the pick the picker big, bro? Eight times. Ah man. LBJ man. You know, my go out here, man, saying say the last dance and this, they go out here saying pick the picker big. Um, I have another uh, coverage too. Okay. I love talking basketball, by the way. <laughs> I bet you do. I, 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 I see. 
I see what's going on here. So, yeah, man, shout out to uh, LeBron James, man, and uh, J.J. Reddick, man. You know, that's a cool white boy, man. He can shoot, man. Um, I have another uh, coverage, too. Okay. I love talking basketball, by the way. <laughs> yeah, man, brand new show, man. It's called Mind the Game, Uninterrupted, and 342 Present. Mind the Game, LeBron James, J.J. Reddick. In the middle of the season, by the way, while the Lakers are in 10th. Play-in status in the Western Conference, by the way. Uh, shout out to Anthony Edwards, because we're going to have to talk about him in just a second. But, yeah, man, everybody want to have a podcast, though, man. Like, what's going on, man? I think I might be I might be willing to listen to one or two episodes of J- LeBron James and J.J. Reddick. Hey, you know, I might be able to, you know, talk some old basketball talk. And go out there and feel like I'm a, I'm a coach. You know what I'm saying? But Savannah James say she finna do a podcast too? Something going on, man. A lot of folks say there's something going on, but I don't know. I don't know there's something going on. But Savannah James say first she said that she was uh, rocking with Sexy Red. You know, she, you know, it was going to be a sexy summer or something she said. Let me see which one I'm gonna pull up. But you know, how can you not rock with Sexy Red? You know what I'm saying? So I guess I can't really even take that as nothing. But that get it sexy is definitely going in right now. All I said the other day was boom, 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 boom. And somebody called me out and was like, it was like, that's what you be listening to, Dave? This is, is this is what you condone in Dame? And I'm on the over there trying to keep it. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Get it, sexy. Get it, sexy. She out there doing the soldier boy, boy. Damn, where's Boondocks when you need them, boy? Where's Boondocks when you need them, man? Oh, man, I might, you know, my, my, my brother be telling me all the time that we need to go ahead, you know what I'm saying, do the Dots Boom, go ahead and get the Dots Boom popping. But, you know, I'm just speaking the cold right now. But, yeah, coming soon, man, because, boy, the material just going to keep on giving itself, man. Get it sexy. Get it sexy. Hey, but yeah, Savannah James gave the uh, she gave the cosign, man. So hey, Savannah James, man, say it's gonna be a sexy. Uh, said this all summer twenty four, get it sexy all summer twenty four, man. And you know, if Savannah James done did that, she back outside. She just didn't tell y'all yet, and you know, she also filming a brand new podcast. It's called. What? Everybody's crazy. Say it again, Dame. The new podcast by Savannah James and April McDaniels is called Everybody's Crazy. Don't tell anyone. I told you. But it's Everybody's Crazy. So what is she trying to tell us? Don't tell nobody. I don't want to know. I don't think I want to know. But yeah, everybody want a podcast, that's for sure. And everybody's crazy. Don't tell nobody else, I told you, though. <laughs> oh, man, run it up, man. Shout out to this, uh, the Jameses. You know what I'm saying? You know, they want to get in on the, on, 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 the, um, on the pod life. And, I, you know, I don't blame them. It's popping over here on the pod life, man. Um, Caitlyn Jenner and Lamar Odom. They also want to start a podcast. Like, who would have thought that a crackhead and a tranny would come together and want to talk sports? This ain't even, I'm going to go ahead and hit the button, but this ain't really. Doja told your radio. Bad, bad jokes, bad button pressing too. But yeah, I mean, I. It, I really ain't trying to make the jokes, but that's really what's going on. Caitlyn Jenner, I, am I not supposed to even call her? C-A-T-L-Y. C 
Caitlyn. It's going to come up. Just look for it. And Lamar, man. Kate and Lamar. What the hell? Why in the hell? How in the hell? Are they really just going to talk just sports? So from the Kardashian home to your podcast, you got Caitlyn Jenner and NBA champion Lamar Odom. He got two rings too, don't he? I think he might even got two of them. A couple of gold medals too. Both of them got, you know what I'm saying, more than a couple of gold medals between the two of them, you know what I'm saying? You know, back in old Caitlyn's heyday, she was once upon a time, you know, on a couple of Wheaties boxes, if you know what I mean. You told your radio. <laughs> I'm still late with the button pressing. I got to get better with my button pressing. Damn it. But I ain't late with my bad jokes. It's going to be plenty of bad jokes to go around fucking around with this goddamn podcast. I'm going to tell you that much. And um, I'm not going to listen to none of it. Nope. Not going to get me. Not going to watch it. Not even going to probably talk about it again. But it was worth talking about it at least once. Because everybody want a podcast right now. For this new Yeah, they're not going. Podcast. They're going to make me talk about it again. Because somebody going somebody to go on the podcast. Or they're going to have something. They're going to say something. And they're just going to be like... Told you, Doja. Gotcha. Again. But let's see what these folks got to say, man. You know, y'all know I love to go, uh, you know. I might just watch a little bit of, of it through somebody else. TikTok or something like that. As long as I can still watch TikTok, you know, they ain't, that ain't even going to be around for much longer. So, you know. But everybody want to have a podcast right now, bro. Still. I thought that was last year's move. You niggas still trying to come out here and have a podcast, man. Let me have my space, bruh. Coming up for this new Big Bad podcast. Apparently, yeah. it's going to be a sports podcast. Yeah, they really um, they really put their heads together and thought long and hard about what they wanted to name this podcast. And they came up with Keeping Up With Sports. <laughs> they are hanging on. <laughs> To the fucking Kardashian Keeping, uh, keeping up with sports Like their life depends on it And it does And guess what People will listen Yeah To a Lamar Odom and Caitlyn Jenner podcast Cause it's not gonna be all sports There's right. no way There's no they way They know the listeners don't want sports from them Yeah yeah If you're Chloe, you have to be like What the fuck you know, If you're the whole family They're in All a of them I mean they just must roll their eyes At anything they do at this oh, point they're though, no? a, Like they gotta be yeah. like Ah oh, here, here they go again they're in a group chat right now, cracking jokes left and right about yes. it. Imagine like, like imagine your dad started a podcast with your ex. Your stepdad starts a podcast with your, with your ex-husband. Any, any other, other family, family where we would be absolutely gobsmacked. No, but any other family that happening it would be like the juiciest drama ever. Yeah, you're like and, fill right. us in, and this is just and like, they, they're of just giving us sports. These two are doing this. They don't give us just sports. Give us, give us a little something Shh. else. Caitlyn will have more. And you know who probably ain't happy about none of this, man. But probably got a lot to say about all of this. Is my guys over there on it? It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a whole lot of pausing going on with my boy Mates and Cam, but I mean, they got the whole of this news. You know what I'm saying? Pause all that, matter of fact. In the spirit of Mason Cam, pause the whole goddamn podcast. Just press pause on the podcast and just walk away. <laughs> Uh, good jokes and bad jokes alike. You know what I'm saying? We still ain't watching the goddamn sports podcast. Keeping up with sports with Caitlyn Jenner and Lamar. Nah, dog, Ain't gone. And it's another couple other folks that want podcasts, man. Believe it or not. Oh, yeah, because we got to get ready to get out of here. So let me go ahead and... uh. Oh, let me go ahead and uh, speed this thing up because uh, I hope that Meat Mill 
and academics go ahead and speed this thing up and go ahead and fight. You know what I'm saying? I wish they had celebrity death match still because the Meek Mill versus academics celebrity death match would be fantastic. Them boys been going at it for at least about three weeks now, back and forth on um on Twitter. And I'm sorry to say, Meek, but you going out bad, sad, bad, mad. You know what I'm saying? Vlad. You going out Vlad on this one. Not even Vlad. You going out bad, sad, mad, had. Any other ads? He going out. You know what I'm saying? Fad. You could throw fad on it now. Nad. Is Nad one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you real nutty. You real nutty out there. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Act has been like just... Act done offered him a million dollars to do a podcast. Act... Act done said he finna ruin his prison res- uh, reform acting on called Mika snitch then start snitching on Mika about you no know say threatening his life you know act at this point he enjoys engaging sexual intercourse with a rapper he enjoys being this guy and it all started because of this clip right here this he was not, the clip it did not say Meek Mill name wait Oh, oh, hold up. Never mind. Wait, what the fuck? I forgot. Look, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper. Five, that's redacted. Look, five, he's a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Yeah, I think that's Yo, true. Meek, we were playing around with that Michael Rubin shit, but if you don't, you've been tweeting about every. Nigga, you've been tweeting about everything on planet Earth. If you don't get a Twitter rant saying you about to get Lil Rod killed, you about to shoot up his block, blow his mama's house up, this nigga is saying that you and Diddy were fornicating. <laughs> what the fuck? Me? <laughs> at this point, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to mess with this man, man. He's like the internet Thanos at this point. And, um, but... They've been going at it for about two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Meet me actually, you know, say he going to do something to academics. And he going to have to kind of do He going to have to actually do it at this point. Say so Meet Mill sent police to academics' house last night. Like, shit, yeah. Of course police going to come to my house. What the fuck is you doing? Give me one minute. You trying to do he tried everything. It's all an internet war. Like, with internet, we're keeping it real goes wrong. That's exactly what's going on. We are watching a real life when keeping it real goes wrong between Meat Mill and academics. And I don't know what how it's going to stop. Like, like they really literally are going to have to fight for it to stop. So Meek Mill has turned down academics offer to do a podcast with him. Hey, it's Asia Sky for Hip Hop DX and check this out. Speaking to X, formerly known as Twitter on Saturday, March 6th, podcast with him. Hey. Nah, but it wasn't really a bad deal. I'm going to say that too. I'm going to say that much too. It wasn't really a bad deal. And shout out to Meek Mill for doing the, um, the on the radar or whatever. He pushing new music out right now or whatever. You know, he's trying to get um, a little traction. Because academics also was the person that reported that Meek Mill only uh, did six, what six uh, thousand records the first week. Um, that's what academics uh, reported, and he said he rounded up. This is not me trying to be funny. I ain't, like I ain't got no horse in the race. I actually like the album. You know what I'm saying Heathism, heathenism or whatever it's called, heathenism. Y'all go stream that. Matter of fact, you know right now, but. Six thousand? That's crazy. That's crazy. I think we was joking about the the city girls one time doing the good five thousand or five or ten thousand or something. Six? That's absolutely insane. Cause you know, Meat Mill is Meat Mill. You know what I'm saying? He got Dream, 
dreams and nightmares. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, y'all got to be out there streaming the meat mill. You know what I'm saying? You know, he went, he, he, he once dated Nicki Minaj. You know what I'm saying? My boy done, 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 done things. And now he wants to do a podcast. So he been uh, doing a whole lot of talking on Twitter. And when people talk on the internet a lot, they eventually want to start a podcast. My boy, uh, my boy academic say, here, get that boy a million for 52 episodes. And gave him a real good uh, deal. I, I, let me see if I can pull up the deal. Let me see if I can pull up the podcast deal. Cause it was, cause it was a damn good deal. I'm like, well, god dang, like, where do I sign up? My boy say, I offer you a million dollars up front for 52 episodes, one a week. We own video and audio with the option to renew for a second year. Also, we bust down ads 50 percent on all on any ads, and that's when they was gonna rake a killing, cause everybody gonna want to put an ad on the Meek Mill podcast sponsored by Academics. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, we can bring in prize picks, Fashion Nova, etc. You can own the podcast, but we share the IP as long as you end the deal. And you could just do the deal for one year and then you'll have your own podcast, me. Boom. Touche. You could win if you just would have took the deal. Say, all right, bet. Do it. I bet you won't do it. Oh, because you said... I want a podcast deal. I have a lot to say on many different levels. If you have a podcast business moving slow, I can reverse that. <laughs> From Meat Mill, I've always been my own media, and I want to join the culture of black media. So, <laughs> damn, Meat, bro. Twitter, the worst thing to happen to some of, these, some of your favorite rappers, man. Should have never gave these niggas X. We're listening to Doja yeah, man, like, with the DVDs, I'm going to be selling DVDs by the end of the show. I'm saying y'all meet me at the door. I'm saying on your way out, man. I'm saying with all these bad jokes and more. I'm saying we also got music, too. I'm saying keep it this day. <laughs> oh, man, man. Got Meat Mill going out, man. All the ads. Bad, sad, mad, had, fat, nat. You know what I'm saying? All the ass. Everything but glad. Everything but glad. Got them going out sad. But that's still my dog. I still bump your music, my boy. I still fuck with you, man. Fuck. Man. I've been rooting for you ever since. You know what I'm saying? Drake got you with the back in the back, man. I'm, I'm still saying. I'm still rooting for you, my brother. You know. I still want you to come through. I'm saying, you know, and I'm going to continue to root for you, my brother. I ain't going to stop. You did what I'm saying? You always going to be my dog, even if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't be my nigga if you don't get no bigger. You did what I'm saying? Stuff. So I'm angry. Yes. But it's not, this is not, be quiet, quiet. Everybody, be quiet. Be quiet. That's what is I'm wrong with you. Help, but you're not Stop quiet. it. I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? When you go to bed at night, you lay there and you take responsibility for yourself. Because nobody's going to take responsibility for you. You roll in your eyes and you act like this because you've heard it all before. You've heard it all before. You don't know where the hell I come from. You have no idea what I've been through. But I'm not a victim. I grow from it and I learn. Take responsibility for yourself. We rooted for you. Oh, man. That's a little uh, America's Next Top Model clip from yours favorite. Tyra Banks. All right, so keeping this thing moving, man. Um, Trump, we talked about uh, Nathan Wade having to having to uh, step down from the case, but we didn't talk about Trump and all the things that Trump got going on. You know I'm saying, you know, if it ain't one thing, it's another with this guy. 
If it ain't one thing, it's another with this guy. Hold on for just one second, man. In fact, since we got to talk about Trump, we got to go into a commercial break. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Dame Doja. If you're looking to get your interview done or be a guest host on our podcast, hit he is good at that's being funny. The guy can tell a joke, bro. He keep us laughing. He keep us, he keep us engaged. He really does have a way. Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis? With the internet. Ever. This is Ever. what Donald Trump Ever. posted. I've been really trying. Yeah, we don't want to get flagged by nobody. So we're going to cut the music a little bit, but. That boy Trump, man. Classic. <laughs> you feel like I feel, baby. No. <laughs> I'm about to say no. We ain't got nothing to do with them women's. Nah, man, but that boy Donald, Donald J. Trump can't tell a joke, man. He's good. But he got to pay a whole lot of money, too. And he's not that good at paying debts. Donald Trump don't really like paying too many debts. He ain't trying to get down with that, that, that paying. Paying people stuff? Nah, dog. That ain't what he's trying to do. You know what I'm saying? And it turns out that Donald Trump got about five days to pay a very, very large debt. Excuse me, I'm acting like I can't talk. Donald Trump got about five days to pay a very large debt. $450 million. I was about to say thousand because that just made a whole lot more sense. But no. He got $450 million worth of debt. And, and some, matter of fact, that's just some of it. $464 million bond. He got a few days to uh, do it. He had uh, 30 underwriters turn him down. 30 different underwriters said, hey, we not finna loan you this money, bro. A lot of folks are, you know, sympathizing with Donald Trump for being um, scrutinized and, and, and taken down in such a way. Um, some folks say that it's kind of a natural thing to inflate um, your properties and your holdings, you know, to get uh, borrow money. So what Trump has been found guilty of, the fraud that they found, why rather... While it probably was at a very large scale, it's something that is very common when it uh, when it comes to uh, real estate. So, a lot of folks seem to sympathize with Donald Trump um, and 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 the the legal woes and the battles that he's having to you know deal with throughout this year and beyond. Um, a lot of it, though, is uh, kind of self-inflicted and i think that if the shoe was on the other foot oh agent orange wouldn't give a damn if i was going through it if i had oh 450 million dollars or upwards around that level i'm sure that he would say hey pay them people so you know what i don't care either I'm not going to give a damn either. And I don't see why y'all do it. On one of Donald Trump's legal cases, Trump's lawyers say the former president has been unable to get a bond for the $464 million fraud judgment against him in that civil fraud case. Back with us now, Catherine Christian, former assistant Manhattan district attorney and MSNBC legal analyst. So, Catherine, they write, Trump's lawyers write in a, a recent filing here that getting the judgment's full amount in a bond is a practical impossibility. They say they have uh, tried to approach about 30 shorty companies through four separate brokers and cannot get a bond for this amount. So what does that mean? 
That says he doesn't have the collateral, so a company is like, no, we're not gonna do it. And what it means, unless the appellate court, and New York is called the appellate division, grants him a stay until after the appeal is done to pay, Attorney General James has said she's gonna go into court, and so he has until March 25th, and she's gonna request that his assets start being seized. Properties, liquid assets, so that's gonna happen if he, does not, if he doesn't get the stay, and he has to pay, because that's what the Attorney General said she's going to do if he doesn't come up with the, the bond or the money. Yeah, so, them folks say, fuck you, pay me, bro. And um, they gonna start seizing your stuff if you don't bring them their money. Now, how much do y'all really love y'all president? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm full, of, I'm full of them today. I was saying DVDs, man. Make sure you pick them up on your way out, man. How much do you really love your son? <laughs> oh, man, man. <laughs> Oh shit! Damn, I, I was trying to pull up that dog on video, but I, now how much do you really love you, son? Cause rent's due. Say so I'm gonna get my son Damon. Come over here and get that money from you, Trump. Ah, oh, fuck it. I can't find that clip. But y'all know where it's due. Y'all know that rent is due. So how much do y'all really love y'all president? Huh? Damon! I had a nightmare about that fool last night. Data. Anyway. On a level four prison yard, you become quite fond of little old girls like yourselves. So either I'm gonna get my rent money today, or somebody getting their salad tossed tonight. Damn! <laughs> hey, you know what? That ain't even necessary. Sure ain't. Brother. Me and Day Day, we start our new job today, and huh? I swear to God, we yeah. gonna have your money later on tonight. Cash. Cash. In your hand. You better. Either you finna come see me, or Damon gonna come see you. Simple as that. You like cause your son's a fag? Shut up, bitch. Oh yeah, Craig. Tell your fine daddy I said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. Oh man, so how much you really love your son? Not enough for the players, damn Rick. But yeah, man, um, how much y'all really love y'all president, man? Y'all, you know, Donald Trump need his money, need, need, need y'all money. He need y'all to go ahead and chip on in. Now. All right, so um, we where's the money that's coming from? Dr. Umar, Dr. Umar, bunny hopping. Do we really? Well, we might not talk about Dr. Umar. Candace Owens. Candace Owens. Okay, we can get out of here. Some bunny hopping and then Candace Owens. Coach Johnson and Shannon Sharp, a few clarifying questions. So let me get this right. Black girls called you ugly? So do you want me to believe that the white girls called you handsome? The black girls called you ugly. So you want me to believe that the white girls called you handsome? If the black girls called you ugly, I'm damn sure the white girls didn't call you handsome. You're, you're, you're listening guess to who Doja Told Your Radio. That dark skin was ugly. 
the white girls taught them that. So if the black girls called you ugly, I can only imagine what the white girls called you. So stop making excuses for your bunny hopping and just admit <laughs> you hate yourself. And that's why you're dating and marrying outside the race. <laughs> I think it said, stop making excuses for your bunny hopping. Girls called you, so stop making excuses for your bunny hopping. <laughs> oh, man, man. That nigga know he will jump on, you know what I'm saying? The white stripe panty, candy, candy, you know what I'm saying? Piece of candy in the moment, you know what I'm saying? You know, I. Oh, man, Dr. Umar, man. He, he 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 lays it down so you know he's so dedicated he's so dedicated to to the movement i'll just say the, the movement you know what i'm saying whatever the movement is maybe the movement might be bowel you know what i'm saying the movement might be you know uh vehicular but uh he's just damn sure gonna be dedicated to that shit you know what i'm saying once again you know what i'm saying dvds yeah but anyway man <laughs> Old, good old Dr. Umar, man. Stop your bunny hopping. I said, uh, and so since we're talking about bunny hoppers, let's talk about Candace Owens, man. Candace Owens, man, she she was on Joe Budden one week. Now, you know what I'm saying? It's lean like we can't get enough. We can't get, you know, we can't get rid of the lady. The lady. Like, she's all over the place now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she was on the Breakfast Club on Joe Button. She just, you know, I've I've been watching that show a little bit. I ain't gonna front. I sometimes I be mad and sometimes I I I I be like, hey, you know, she's a very very well educated black woman. Some folks say that if Candace Owens wasn't attractive, she wouldn't get away with a lot of things that she gets away with. She wouldn't get a pass. She wouldn't get on on these platforms for spewing some of the crazy, you know, rhetoric that she does. You know what I'm saying? Now, some of the Hitler-type rhetoric can't stand for it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like she is, a, you know, a, a grifter, if uh, if I may choose the, the best word. To describe what she does, she gets paid by the right wing um, uh, politics, uh, right wing um, piggy bank to say certain things, to rile up the media, to make uh, black people think a different type of way, maybe to influence uh, overall. And um, this is a picture of Candace Owens and I want to say high school or maybe it was the beginning of college. When she actually used the NAACP and um, she was facing racist threats and racism uh, at school for something that she said at school. And um, she sued and got a settlement for, uh, for that. And that's how everything kicked off. So she was once on, you know, not that she's not on our side, I would say. But I don't know what Candace, you know what I'm saying? One, she, she's a grifter, so you don't know what side she on, really. And, um, and then I got kind of angry, like, just with the, the lies, because I do think black Americans are intentionally manipulated emotionally by the media and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of kept dumb but emotional intentionally by the school system. And I started reading up on, like, Thomas Sowell, Shelby Steele, a bunch of black scholars I originally had dismissed as Uncle Tom's and... You know, irony now is I get calls on the time all the time. So <laughs> I got what was coming. But yeah. And, and then I realized that actually I've always been a conservative. I just didn't know it. And economically speaking, of course, the conservative arguments make the most sense. Does that bother you that people call you an Uncle Tom? No, not at all. First off, because if they read the book, Uncle Tom was the hero. Uh, <laughs> but also because I get it. You know, how can I fault people for something that I would have engaged in for the majority of my life? I thought the same thing about black conservatives. Like, I thought it was this betrayal, but I never actually understood it. It was just an emotional response. And I think that kind of is, if you come out of the public school system, I can't imagine how you could be a black conservative when just the way that they even tell us our, our own history is just not true, you know? 
So, a lot of folks have been uh, getting kind of interested in old Candace, and then this is the type of time and the time of year, um, well, not time of time, that it would be, um, you know, time for her to do her thing. Election, election year. Um, this is when it's time for Candace Owens to activate and insert herself into the media, into into. Uh, the conversation. Um, now, sure, I got to say that I, I am. Um, I can say that I'm a fan. I'm interested in what Candace has to say. I think that she's very intelligent. I think that some of the things that she says may not be her own thoughts. Some of the things she says may be uh, to influence for a certain perspective. That perspective usually is on the opposite side of my thinking and the way that I like to carry myself as an American. But nevertheless, she does say a lot of things that are also beneficial to the way I carry myself as an American. And, you know, you can find yourself torn when listening and discussing facts about this woman. Um, But don't get it twisted. I do not think that it's genuine. I do not think that it's real. I think that it's orchestrated. I think that it's funded. I think that it's manipulation. And I pay attention to it so I can, for one, learn from the way that she conveys her message. I think that she's a very good orator. And the way that she speaks is is very interesting and very very on point. So I can I try to learn from that. I also take in the message. I try to be open to at least hear her speak on certain messages and to hear the perspective that I may not be privy to or I may not have thought to think about. And that also make an argument like this, which is essentially. But again, she is very, very well spoken. I wouldn't be surprised if she would one day. She actually went to think about running for senator, and then she got pulled to the side um, and became a right-wing activist. And she says it, of course, because it was liberal uh, education that drove her to the other side. But many want to think what drove her to the other side when it came to marrying black men and here was her explanation to that and we'll we'll we'll, we'll share this and then we'll move on but again um it's it's just a fine line on what side that you're on with candace and again she speaks very well she's very educated she's also pretty and maybe those are the reasons that she's able to get off certain takes or certain perspectives or have certain platforms with her rhetoric and here is she Candace Owens explaining why she married a white man. Black family, but then you married a white man. Yeah, I'm Dr. Umar would have a huge problem with that. Okay, I would love to talk to him more about that. You know, the black family. Dr. Umar. But then you married a white man. Yeah, I'm Dr. Umar would have a huge problem with that. Okay, I would love to talk to him more about that because, I mean, it's it's always very interesting to me to hear this paradox of black people who will make an argument that, you know, the system is racist and then also make an argument like this, which is essentially making an argument for the Supreme Court to revisit Virginia versus love and basically say that black Americans and white Americans shouldn't be marrying. I think the greatest thing ever is when people come together on the basis of who they love and get married. You know, for me personally, I never thought of my husband as a race. It's it's, it's very interesting to me that two people go, she's She's married to a white man. I look at my kids. I'm not like, oh, my kids are mixed. I married the person that it made the most sense for me to marry. I have a mind that is just, you know, if you even knew half the things that I'm thinking about, the stuff that I'm reading, just go, 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 go all the time. It's it's difficult for me to find. It was difficult for me to find a partner that was a challenge to me. You know, the challenge mm-hmm. that I needed, um, whether you want to say like an academic challenge, whatever it is, with my same interests. Mm-hmm. It just was. Uh, what you will know, a lot of times people think that when people come together, it's because of how they look. Actually, I actually read this in a Thomas Sowell book, or maybe it was a Shelby Steele book. Uh, 
people tend to marry their IQ, which is interesting. Mm. You think like if you see two black people together, oh, it's because they are two black people, but actually they, they are probably better matched based on their IQ. Um, you know, I fell in love with my husband just because I think he is one of the most brilliant people ever. You know, I love him very much. The stuff that we talk about, I'm like, there is no other person that I could have married. We have three beautiful children uh, yeah. who are growing up in an environment that I am just so happy that I was able to, you know, what every parent wants, to give your children better than you had, you know? And I, that's all I can say. I'm just the luckiest person in the entire world. You know, How is he going to feel about you not finding him attractive and just liking him for his mind? What oh, you, my God. <laughs> what? He, he, got, he got the smear already ready for the journalists that are listening. Janet you... says her hell? husband is not... <laughs> <laughs> it was a bonus that I also think that he's beautiful and gorgeous and handsome, but it really was about his mind. Yeah. I know I married the right person, and I want every person to never allow like race to be a barrier to you finding love. That is yeah. so foolish. That will stop you. And by the way, you know, there's this. There has been so much toxicity, in, particularly in black relationships, because of the media portraying black men as this or black women as this. And I, we just have to stop doing that, you know? Yeah. Have you ever dated... Yeah. I don't think Dr. Umar would be having any of that going on. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, stop making excuses, Candace Owens. Admit that you really hate yourself. And I don't know if this called bunny hopping because it's peckerwood <laughs> jumping. You know what I'm saying? Word to the brother Umar here. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. What won't have none of that. Know what I'm saying, brother Umarius. <laughs> nah, man, like I say, man. Candace Owens, man. It's that time of year. It's election time, man. So you know, when you start seeing certain agents activated, just you know. Refer to the the pamphlets and think to yourself, oh, it must be election season. That's why they're trying to get rid of TikTok. It must be election season. That's why the gas prices is going down. It must be election season. That's why the stock market doing so great. I don't know. Maybe I'm just me. I'm just tripping. All right, so let's get ready to get up out of here, man. We got a couple of more videos to feed y'all before we get up out of here. How about this video right here, man? Um, oh, yeah, man. Actually, we got a lot to talk about in the sports world. Matter of fact, yeah, yeah. We got to get into the sports part of the po uh, uh, of the podcast. You know, you know, there's a lot of dunks to talk about. A lot of dunks to show y'all. I'm saying go ahead and get up out of here, man. Show y'all these quick dunks. I'm saying dunk -a rules. You know, these folks jumping out the gym out here in these streets. And then we go ahead and close out the show. We didn't talk about the mass shooting at Jacksonville Beach on Sunday. Um, and that is very unfortunate. Very unfortunate situation. Um, I don't want to skip uh, the important stories. So let's go ahead and watch this video real quick. Yeah. Crazy, right? What y'all scared for? Damn, they shoot no. Just stay down, just stay down. I would just stay down. I don't want to move. Ooh. I mean, because it sounds like it's over by a building or something. He's alright. He's the Folks running zigzag and all trying to get up out of there, man. Hey, okay, man. So spring break is upon us, man. You know, we are um, in America. So you really got to always be on your toes. You have to keep your head on the swivel and please be safe out there. Um, I hear that the folks still going out there to Miami Beach, even though they having like, you know, uh, weapons checks, uh, roadblocks, 
you know, high parking and all these type of things. And, you know, the beach is open, opening back up. The uh, weather is uh, coming back to a nice warm setting and everybody's getting uh, coming back outside, gathering in big gatherings. So you got to watch out for these crazy. Now, I ain't going to say crazy for these disturbed people out here that are just um, that just probably have a little bit too much freedom. I'm saying, you know, and a little rage built up and they may want to hurt folks and um, and large um, and large uh, casualties. Um, and again, thoughts and prayers to anybody that was harmed um, in the Jacksonville Beach uh, mass shooting over the weekend. Um, that is my hometown. I didn't really want to uh, I didn't really want to cover it. I am. I, I have to admit that as an American you become desensitized to shootings, and that is terrible. That is absolutely uh, insane and absolutely disgusting that I have to admit that. Um, but you just really just have to kind of just not necessarily live in fear and stay inside, but, you know, just know um, these are certain reasons why I feel that I probably would start carrying weapons. I, I at one point didn't want to be a person that would have to, carry any weapons um but as an american who just has to be smart um i think i, I i'm going to have to look into that in the next uh in the next couple of months um it's all already with owning one is already a must but you may have to start carrying that bitch with you and um Uh, let me see if I can get any actual other information about anybody that might have been uh, hurt during that uh, particular incident. Um, so let's see. One person was uh, pronounced dead. Two are in critical condition after the shooting on Jacksonville Beach. Um and I, we just need everybody to be safe, bro. Really sort of pulled up after this had happened. Uh, so a lot of this is just kind of minimizing threats, seeing if you can find anything by air, you know, by uh, by road, you know, as people were heading up and down. And when I was heading down from further north, I had probably maybe one patrol car pass me, you know, kind of rushing to the area. But for the most part, when I arrived, it didn't, it looked like what had happened had happened. And this was just really kind of control the situation, try to get everybody out of the particular area where the shootings occurred so that investigation could start could start but I, again we don't know where they're from right. we don't know if they're still in the area which is why you're being urged to stay away in fact you know Vic as we've been showing and, and Judd if you can just pan to the right here just for perspective here you know you see here's Beach Boulevard right so you've got all of these cars who've been trying to come to the businesses well some of them are closed so they're coming down here and they're doing a u-turn and then going back I mean this whole area is as I was pulling up actually whole area shut down so they just gonna end up shutting down a whole lot of stuff, man, because of um the um ignorance of, of some that's gonna end up affecting the freedoms of many. Um but again, as an American, you kinda get desensitized to, to gun violence and, and that's bad. That's bad. Um another video that kinda surfaced or whatever that Monsanto had a lot of folks talking. How do we get there? How do we get there? Let's see where this started. All right, so we got two kids on the basketball court. I'm saying one kid looks to be a little frustrated with the other, and he tends to take his frustrations out by being a little violent. Where's his parents? What? How was this little boy raised? His parents should know better. So, boom. The little boy uh, seems to attack the other little boy, and uh, the um, apparent victim of, of the moment happens to be the white little boy. So there was a guy who ran out and grabbed the kid who was do, doing the, the attacking, grabbed him a bit. He doesn't seem to be on the same team as the kid because he's wearing red. And the other boy was wearing red. So maybe he's on the wrong team. Maybe he's the other coach. 
But he was just kind of doing his job. He was also kind of reacting a little fast. And he, he quickly let the boy go, gave the boy to, you know, the proper guidance, the proper supervisors of the moment of the child and attempted to move on. But before he can move on and get far, car blow. Now he finds himself on a football field all of a sudden, and he's running a crossing route, and Ray Lewis happens to be on that same football field. Now, this part of the story is not actual, you know, facts, but that's kind of what the hit probably felt like. Ray Lewis hitting you as you coming across the middle to catch a football pass, and pow. And then a white lady says, holy shit. So let's discuss in the comment box, who's in the wrong here? Kid number one, the aggressor. Kid number two, for whatever he did to get the aggressor to react this way. We didn't see that part. That's, that's something that we must factor in. What we didn't see is what makes the story the real story. But we'll just go with speculation because speculation is more fun than anything. So who's in the wrong? Was it the kid in the red? Was it the kid in the white? Was it the coach in the red? Was it the coach in the white that came quickly and separated the two and took his own kid to supervise and scold him or whatever he had to do, discipline him? Or was it the parent that came out of nowhere? Or was it the woman who got it all on camera? Whose side are you on? Who's right, who's wrong? Let us know in the comment box. I'm sure you guys are very, very interested in being, you know, on either side. Maybe you just want to enjoy the video like I did and like this lady did when she said. Holy shit. That's a good video, right? Yeah, I bet. Doja told you, man, man. You know what I'm saying? Thoughts and prayers are all of. Uh, kids that were harmed or potentially harmed if their feelings was harmed or anything in the sort thoughts and prayers to everybody involved uh i know i wasn't supposed to clap we we, we didn't need claps but hey that was the that was the best that was the next best thing uh okay so let's go ahead and uh get up out of here man um oh sports 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 did y'all see the dunks did y'all see the best dunks of the year this Anthony Edwards guy is a monster. Like, literally a monster on the court. He should be uh, drug tested and um, checked for uh, enhancements. Alien enhancements, in fact. In fact, this guy just pulled off the same dunk from Space Jam's. The dunk that Jordan did, that LeBron did, you know, the stretch the arm dunk. And here it is in real time. Warren did not score and only had one shot attempt in that first half. Another turnover for Utah. Edwards gets it. Back. Oh, my goodness. One more, time, more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. And only had one shot attempt in that first half. Another turnover for Utah. Edwards gets it back. Oh. And threw it down. MG. And one. Why he had to do that boy like that? Why he had to do that boy like that? Oh, no. Why'd you jump? Was it a dunk? Does that still count as a dunk? Because he the way he threw the ball in? down at his hand. Kind of flush. He still threw that ball in. Kind of flush. Is it a dunk? To the dunk. Is it a shot? It's an and one. Is it a block? Is it a charge? Opportunity, but if he can't shoot this free throw. I'll tell you who needs to be shot. 
Anthony Edwards, right, who needs to be doing some shooting? That boy Collins need to go get the strap. <laughs> that boy Collins need to go get the strap after that, bro. Because, uh-uh, ain't no way. You ain't finna go home and tell your kids about this. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, my goodness. The innocent bystanders couldn't believe what they saw. Oh, MG. Poke, poke that man in the eye like that, man. That's what that's you know, that's what really happened. They ain't gonna talk, they ain't you know, haters gonna say, you know, he didn't poke in, he didn't poke that man in the eye, but yeah, we seen it. But either way, John Collins, you need to go get the strap. Because that wasn't right. And that boy Anthony Edwards need to be tested. Because ain't no way he need to be doing stuff like that to people. Why he doing Why he out there doing Why he out there doing, doing that stuff? Mama, they go that man. So was it a dunk? Anybody even want to? Anybody even want to question that part of the? It's just been some amazing stuff. Now he was just coming off another highlight just the other day where he damn dang almost killed himself trying to block, trying to block a shot. The kid need to be tested. The kid out there doing all kinds of freaky, the greatest players in team history freaky are things. Jeff Garnett's number one. Carl Anthony Towns is number two. Kevin Love is number three. And they're three bigs. You know, it's like wow. Anthony, Ed- Anthony Edwards is, is really the kid out there getting player. freaky. The kid out there in Minnesota balling like like a madman. He's a madman, I tell you. He's a madman. The way he, you know, blocked that, you know, shot had us talking, you know. Cause he was balling that game. This is the this is the sequence with the block shot. The, 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 guy, the, the kid is a madman. He needs to be tested for God's sakes. We about to end the show, but God goodness gracious, we got to talk about this. We got to. We got to. Six points for Edwards. Pull up from deep. Cash. Thirty nine. Got to defend without fouling. Travel. They don't call the travel. McDaniel's with the rebound. And they missed an obvious travel by Miles. Pull up. Yes, sir. He's unstoppable. Mama, they go that man. Thirty-six points for Edwards. Mama, they go that man. From deep cash. I'm going crazy out there. You know. And so he did all that before he blocked the man shot at the end of the game. You know, I you know, I, I'm skipping around. But the boy almost killed himself trying to block the shot. So again. We were just talking about. Your boy, uh, what's his what's his face? We don't even we don't even talk about him no more. John Morant. But we don't talk about him no more because of this man right here, the new alien in town, doing shit like this. They ain't getting right up to be young. So what y'all do? What y'all got? The Minnesota, you know what I'm saying? Is Minnesota for real? Should we, should we, should we, uh, are they really contenders? They currently in the top of the Western Conference, but are they really contenders? Anthony Edwards, is he Jordan's son? You know what I'm saying? Is Anthony Edwards, you know, Jordan from another dimension? 
You know, some folks been 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 saying been 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 been, been posting some stuff that may got them looking alike. By the way, Jordan I did that before. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. That boy Mike was doing that in college. Yeah, he out there looking like Jeffrey. He out there looking like Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Nah, you know what I'm saying? You know. Are we sure? Forget drug tests. He might need to be blood tested. Yeah, they're looking like Michael Jeffrey. Seriously. C- come on now. Y'all say, come on now. This is what needed to be on the shoe. Yeah, man. Shout out to Anthony Edwards, man. Doing the goddamn thing out there, man. Them folks, man. Out there. Join them folks, man. How the hoop. Oh, Kyrie Irving. Yeah. We got to show Kyrie Irving, too. Kyrie Irving is being called one of the greatest, uh, one of the most skilled players of all time. How do we feel about this? How do we feel about this? We went from goddamn talking about Anthony Jordan Jeff uh, Edwards to Kyrie Irving, but Kyrie Irving, um, he did something special during Ramadan, and we got to we got to we got to give him his credit. We got to give him his his props, and then we will get up out of here. Kyrie Irving, man, did y'all see it? And Dallas with a long rebound. Did y'all see Kyrie Irving win the game with the left hand? With the left hand floater. It was amazing, wasn't it? Well, let's watch it again. In case you missed it, let's watch it in slow motion. Poetry in motion, man. This guy on the court is poetry in motion. Like, it's just phenomenal. If you think that I was saying, if you think that that was just a regular shot, you know, if you want to even question the the difficulty of what Kyrie Irving pulled off, you know, be my guess. Five guards out there. But you won't be able to do it. You know, you won't find you too many players that can actually do it. Kleba to inbound. Kleba looking in for Irving. Irving for Real the time. win. Left hand, bro. Just absurd. Not sure indeed. It was over un, you know, I ain't going to call him uncoordinated, but uh, not the best coordinated and athletic person. He's still seven foot, though. So is Kyrie Leave it in bound. the most skilled NBA basketball player of all time? Damian Lillard seems to think so. Damian Lillard says that Kyrie Irving is the most skilled NBA player of all time. And that came from a highly skilled NBA player, point guard. Kyrie Irving doesn't get a lot of love when they talk about all-time point guards. He doesn't get a lot of love when they talk about all-time scores. But the package that Kyrie Irving is as a basketball player, you know, left, right, finish, um, post, three-pointer, dunk, dribbles, passing, yeah, he might be. I'm not going to say it. Because I don't play basketball and I'm not, you know, you know, not going to say that. But Kyrie Irving, the most skilled motherfucker ever, bruh. Ever, bruh. That was Damian Lillard. And if Dame said it, then, hey, Dame might as well say it too. 
If Dame said, it, then who am I to say anything else? So y'all go home and then y'all practice doing that from the left. You know what I'm saying? With your left hand, you know, in fast motion, you know. See how many you make, you know, see, you know, and then let us know. Uh, but that's not the only one of the only moves that I've actually, and that's not the first time or the last time I'm probably going to hear somebody say that Kyrie Irving is the most skilled motherfucker to ever touch that basketball. He's just very, very gifted. He's very, 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 very gifted player. But at Anthony Edwards, yeah, he needs to be drug tested and blood tested. We don't know what type of blood he got going on. If he's not alien, he's not Jordan, we don't know what's going on. So with that being said, man, that was the politics. That was the allegations, and that was the sports, man. Just a little bit, but just a little bit of sports is all y'all need. And we're going to go ahead and get up out of here, man, because uh, it's been another great show. Very, very lengthy, but great show. Make sure y'all check in with us every week on the YouTube. Um, follow us on the YouTube if you have not uh, already. Like and subscribe. All the information is right there on uh, my right um, yeah, that subscribe button right there, that's for YouTube. Doja Toja on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, Doja Toja Radio on the Missler app, and DojaToja.com. If you would like to see it all in one place, go to the website, man. You can catch the highlights of all the shows, or you can um, listen to the full, um, you know, music and shebang on the, um, on the website. Yeah, by going to the Mix Lab, Toja Toja Radio. Yeah. Hit send us in uh Cash App if you got it, man. Any contra contribution, any kind of contribution would help, would go a long way, you know what I'm saying? Dollar, five dollars, whatever you would care to give. Doja Toja Radio is how you would do that. And um we just appreciate y'all, man. This is uh the hundred and fifth time that we've done this and it just keeps getting better and better. So I appreciate y'all. You're listening to Doja Toja Radio. Shout out to DJ Shed Street for pulling up on me. Shout out to DJ T C for checking in. Shout out to the Mad Hatter. Shout out to Gal Z. Uh shout out to Mojo305 checking in. And shout out to CJ uh so cool. Shout out to DJ Decepticon and everybody at the Atlanta Art District for giving us the opportunity to come over and over and over and over. Pause. <laughs> come harder over and over and over and over. Pause again. Uh, in case you was wondering, we will be at the door with all of the DVDs, you know what I'm saying? Because these bad jokes are just going to keep on coming. And uh, shout out to Meat Mill for uh, going out all kinds of bad, sad, glad, mad, had, and sad. Yeah, all types of sad, you know what I'm saying? But uh hey, if he didn't meet if he didn't do t- uh tweets, then we wouldn't have meet tweets. And then that's what we like over here at Doja Toja Radio. So we appreciate, man, all the support, man, all the love and all the things to talk about, man. Once again, it's the Doja Toja Podcast. Let's go ahead and get out of here um with some most priority kid, man. Toxic traits, nah nah nah. Let's play one of the happy songs from Sorry the Kid. This one's called uh What's the, what's the, uh, you only as good as your last or something like that. Sorry, the kid happily never after those told you radio. Remember who told you bump, bump what they told you. Remember as those told you, you did. Too late for this shit, but I mean, I still didn't say it right, but it's all good. Anyways, anyways, you're listening to Doja Told Your Radio. I like to fall in love. Yeah. You already knew what. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Dame Doja. If you're looking to get your interview done or be a guest host on our podcast, hit us up at dojatoja at gmail.com. Bump what you heard. Remember who told you? It's Doja Told You.